to the start. Welcome to the start of week three of Occupy Minnesota. Thank, thank is the thousands and thousands who have come out here over the last two weeks whenever they could. They took a break from their job. They took a break from their kids. They took a break from their lives. They stayed an hour. They stayed two hours. They came back. They just used the porta potties and raised a fist. It doesn't matter. What we have here is a people's plaza. This is our plaza, and we're going to keep it. So what I want us to be is I want us to be critical thinkers. I don't really know what to say to y'all. I mean, we're two weeks into this. This ain't easy. I know why I'm here. Because whenever I leave this plaza, it just feels like a prison. Yeah. Yeah. I thought I got promised a playground. Where's my freedom? Where's my freedom of speech? Where's my freedom to be? Because I swear to God, I look around here, and I mean, it's a lot deeper than physical. It's a lot deeper than social. It's a lot deeper than emotional. It's why we got to be critical thinkers. And just because we are leaderless does not mean that we are without organization. And, I mean, I, I say thank you to the people that put their bodies on the line. But to a degree, we got to think smarter, not harder. I'm sorry, but I'm looking around here and you, I, I, I'm not seeing nearly enough faces that reflect my complexion. And that's about 400, 500 years old. And that hurts me every single day because you, honest to God, you don't see what it is that I see. It hurts. Every day. You know it. Call your politicians. Activate. Talk to your neighbors. Talk to your friends. Talk to your family. I don't know what else to say. All I gotta do is one right quick, right though. Mic check. My check. I said mic check. check. Communication. Communication. Plus unity. Plus unity. Communication. Communication. Plus unity. Plus unity. Equals. Equals. Community. Peace. Community. Thank you. Hey everyone, I'm here today representing the students and youth who are all part of the 99% and who have joined this movement as we begin the fight back to reclaim our future. Youth unemployment today in the U.S. is 18.4%, double the overall rate. For black youth, that number is 30%. Ooh. Such dire prospects means that young people are taking unstable, low-paying jobs that don't match our skill sets or training. School has become more and more unaffordable. Most of us face or will face tens of thousands of dollars in student loan debt that we have no idea how we'll ever pay back. Our prospect of hopeless debt, unemployment, and lack of health care makes us the first American generation to face a declining standard of living compared to our parents. Like everyone else in this country, we have been backed so far into a corner that we can go no further and our only option is to fight back. We have learned that we must take our future into our own hands because those in power are not going to do anything to help us out. The former slave and abolitionist leader, Frederick Douglass, had some magnificent work advice for us. He said, power concedes nothing without a demand. It never has and it never will. We must begin to raise our demands. Right now in the U.S., there's an outstanding student loan debt of $840 billion. This is what should be bailed out instead of the banks. And in line with the 99% slogan, the combined wealth of just the richest 400 Americans could pay off all the student loan debt for every single student in the entire country. In doing this, we must link our struggles with those against wars, against racism, and for a strong labor movement, because that's the only way we'll truly have strength against the 1%. We have to organize and build a movement that can raise the cost for those in power of maintaining the status quo. This means in the meantime, we have to go back to our communities and our campuses, and we have to build. Start talking to people and asking why they're pissed and what they'd like to see different. We have nothing to lose but our chains, but we have the world to win. A better world is not only possible, it's worth fighting for. Tax the rich, bail out the students, not the banks. Money for jobs and education, not war and occupation. Um, and I'm here because I know who crashed our economy. Right there. 
U.S. Bank, Wells Fargo, the one percent. Uh, so I have a, a bank account at U.S. Bank. Who else here does? Whatever. Or Wells Fargo? Okay. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to U.S. Bank and close my account. But I'm not going to do it just by myself because that's going to mean nothing, right? Like, who cares? One person closes their account. So I think what we got to do is all of us get together, go over there one day, close our accounts. So if you uh, have an account at U.S. Bank, um, please come find me and I'll also try to come find you and give me your contact information so I can follow up about when we're going to do this. Thanks. And thank you. And I want to say I'm Deb on the events committee from Occupy Minnesota, and we are going to organize that as an event. Yeah. Yeah. Hello, everyone. Two weeks of occupation. Woo! That's right. And what a two weeks it's been. We've marched on banks. We've occupied intersections. We've pitched tents. And we're going strong, right? I will sleep here tomorrow night and I put out the invitation and the challenge to all of you to join me tomorrow night, right? Who's going to do it? And furthermore, I want you to go back and talk to your groups or your organizations or your families or whatever and talk about uh, adopting a night once a week or once every two weeks or whatever you can do to come here. Next week is going to be just as good. And I've got an announcement for Thursday. AIM and Clyde Bellacourt are going to be doing an action on tar sands. They're going to bring a pipeline from, with very crude oil from Alberta, Canada, across Nebraska, all kinds of states, down to Texas. And we've got people coming down from Canada, and uh, Bemidji, and, and Clyde, and AIM here are going to do a march on the Canadian concert at 10 o'clock on Thursday. Are you going to be here? Yeah. All right. And Wednesday, you come here at 5 o'clock and you're going to learn more about the tire sands, but it looks like people really do know. But Clyde's going to have all kind of information. So we'll see you next week. We'll see you tomorrow night, right? All right.